Welcome to the West End Church of Christ. We are conveniently located at 4401 West Broadway. We have ample parking around the building as well as a parking lot that's located adjacent to the building. Our regular order of service is Sunday morning at 10 a.m. we have Bible study. Afterwards at 11 a.m. we have our morning worship. At 5 p.m. on Sundays we have our Sunday evening worship. We do have midweek Bible study Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and we have classes for all ages. At the Western Church of Christ we also offer a radio program called More Bible Talk. It is broadcasted from WLLV, that's 1240 AM on the radio dial, and 101.9 on the FM dial. The dates and times of the classes are Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 2 to 2.30 p.m. We also have a website. It is www.westncoc.com. On this website, you can retrieve lessons brought from the pulpit. Thank you very much. If you're able, please stand. And if you care to mark your hymn books to the Song of Invitation, it will be number 550. We'll sing number 550. That will serve as the Song of Invitation immediately following the lesson. Before the lesson, we'll sing hymn number 219. And number 219, we'll sing stanzas 1, 2, and 4. And number 219 stanzas 1, 2, and 4. 1, 2, and 4. 219. <clears throat> There's a royal banner given for this name to the soldier. stated as we look at our class from this morning following the pattern doing things as it is written Amen. I can stand before you 
can tell you many of things. Some you will believe right away. Other things you will want to go back and research to make sure that they are true. And that's, that's normal, you know, for a man to, to take another man's word for being truth and for some to say, I, I need some facts on that. And I, I was sitting there thinking about the, the title of the lesson, The Importance of Prophecy. And I was thinking to stand before you, and since a lot of times we do what we think, I'm going to tell you that, I'm just telling you this now, okay? Don't no one take it for being true <laughs> that I'm a prophet. Well, <laughs> say, say that a little bit louder. Well, <laughs> what was that last part? <laughs> What'd you say? Well, what? Jesse? No. <laughs> well, you lying. It's, it's a lot of what you all were thinking. Don't ever hold back for what you know to be true. Man. If, if I stand before you and tell you that I'm a prophet, be quick to tell me that you're lying, Amen. that I'm a lie. For I say that because of what God's word says. We, we need to understand what a prophet was. Amen. Not is, mm -hmm. but was. Amen. I wasn't the best student in class. I wasn't the worst student in class, but I understand past tense and present tense. Man. Is is present, mm -hmm. was is past. Mm -hmm. So we need to understand that the prophets were, whoa, past tense, men that God spoke to That's right. filling it up with past right brother Brian mm -hmm. spoke to not speak Amen. to spoke to they were men were men of God and there were false prophets and there were true prophets I'm saying all that to say this that for a person to proclaim to be something or somebody that God has not selected is nothing more than a liar. Amen. So when we look at his word, and, and that's what we, we're going to do this morning, we're, we're going to look at his word, and we're going to look at this verse here in Hebrews chapter 1, Verse 1 and 2. Not today. Not even yesterday. But the writer says long ago. At many times and in many ways. God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, mm -hmm. he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. Amen. God. We, we looked at last week on oh, the Godhead, the three in the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. When we find the Bible stating that God spoke to the fathers 
by the prophets. We're not talking about God the Son. We're talking about God the Father. Amen. How do I know this? Because the writer, again, clarifies that fact. But in these last days, he, who he, he, God, has spoken to us by his, who his? His, God, 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 his son. Amen. God, Father, God, Son. Now, how do we have this information? We have this information by God the Spirit. Amen. And, and we accept this information. And we run with this information. And we, and we want to continue to stand by it. For he says in 2 Peter 1.21, For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man. But men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All true. How do we know God's word today? Is God speaking to us? Has the Holy Spirit came and as Brother Thanatopoulos said, has, has he parted us? Oh. We know the word today because we study the word Amen. to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Second Timothy 2, 15. The importance of prophecy. Well, why do we talk about these things? Why do we talk about prophecy? We talk about prophecy because we are living in a time where prophecy is being fulfilled. Man. No, I'm not talking about wars and rumors of wars. Mm. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about living. Mm. The greatest prophet that ever lived, Jesus the Christ, Man. prophesied about his own death. Did it come to pass? Man. Well, yes. Why? Because he was a true prophet. Man. One sent by God to follow the will of God, to tell the things that God wanted to be told. We're still listening to him today. Amen. We're still following his example today, and we need to continue to do those things. For again, as I mentioned, that people will come to you and tell you that, I, that they are a prophet or a prophetess. Do not be afraid to tell them that they are un. Truthful. Amen. Do not be afraid. God is on your side, not theirs. Amen. You hear people say, oh, he's a prophet of God. You need to listen to him. She's a prophetess. You need to listen to her. You need not listen to them. <laughs> you need to listen to the son. And how are you going to hear him if you do not pick up the word? Amen. You're not. You're not. We have to read through his word to know what he has in store for us. We're going to look at some things on this morning. And as we look at them, I want you to again take God's word for face value. We gain comfort and encouragement from the word of God. In Second, I mean, First Thessalonians. Chapter is 4, 1 Thessalonians, the chapter is 4. We need comfort. Mm -hmm. And it's by God's word that, that we're going to be able to gain it. We read here and it talks about the coming of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Again, what is that? That's prophecy. Yeah. Prophecy. We, we have two words. We have we have prophecy, well, let me back up, we have one that, the, the word prophesy, one that is telling what God has said, and then we have prophecy, what they have told. And we look at these things, and, and we get an understanding from these things, for as the writer is talking here, as Paul is writing to the church of Thessalonica here, we find that he is talking about something that has been prophesied, the coming of the Lord. The coming of the Lord, did that not come to pass? 
came to pass by the Lord being born of a virgin. But this coming is the second coming. The coming where he tells he will come in the clouds with his holy angels to receive unto himself a, a perfect church. Amen. Individuals that have done what they're supposed what, what they were supposed to do. And let's look at verse 16. It says, For the Lord himself would descend from heaven with a cry of command with the voice of an archangel and with the sound of the trumpet of God and, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and are left will be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. Words of promise. Why do we need them? We need them so that we may have strength to carry on. We need them so, so that we may understand that, that God is not a respecter of person, that he's told us all that we need to know. Again, he's given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Amen. We have to live a holy life in order to benefit from what he's talking about right here. You, you die today. Some are still living. But you died in faith. You, the Bible says those that have died in the Lord, see that they will rise first. The dead in Christ. You're with him now. You'll be with him throughout all eternity. Amen. That's what we're looking forward to, isn't it? Amen. The Bible prophesies and tells us that we can have that. Amen. If we would only do what we were supposed to do. John 14, 1. You know, we get comfort from his word. We get encouragement from his word. Jesus is telling his disciples there in, in John 14, 1. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. It's encouragement, isn't it? Amen. You know who God is. You know what God has done. He, he said, let not your hearts be troubled. Be encouraged. Be filled with comfort. You believe in God? Believe also in me. Have seen the works that God has done. Witness those things. She said, believe in me. Why should they believe in him? Because he tells them what he's going to do and what he's going to do after he's done what he said he was going to do. I'm going to go and I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Those some encouraging words. No one, but no one like to be left behind. Man. If Jesus has said it, we can count it as done. Man. He's God, is he not? Did we not look at that on last week? Amen. He's never lied, never will lie. Amen. He's going to hold true to what he said he's going to do. He's going to come back to get them, whether they're living in those individuals he was talking to are dead, long dead. He's coming back to get them. They're waiting, waiting in a good place. Are we waiting today? Will we be in a good place? Or, or we, will we be where he expects us to be or want us to be if he comes back today? I'm not talking about tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised. Right now. Not the future, not the past, but right now. Are you who God wants you to be? If not, you need to change. You need to change. Hope and tranquility. In Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2, verse 13. You know, we hope for a whole lot of things. The things that we hope for, are they accordance to the will of God? We find here in, in Titus 2, let's start with verse 11. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people. 
Training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. Waiting for our blessed hope. The appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. Who gave himself to, for us to redeem us from all lawless and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. To the work, Brother Brian, <laughs> to the word. You know, we have to understand what our work is. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, a lot of people say that they're self-employed. They do what they want to do. <laughs> they, 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 they push the time clock when they want to push it. They, they select, you know, I'm going to do this or I'm not going to do this. When we start talking about doing the work that, that is good, it needs to be according to the Lord's will. Amen. And then again, let's understand something. Just because you are zealous for good works, you're doing good things, sometimes that's not good enough. You have to make sure you're doing everything that you're supposed to do to be pleasing unto God. Let, let's, let's understand what he says there in verse 12 again. Training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age. You know, Lord, I was doing some good things. I, I was doing my very best to do what you wanted me to do. But something, somebody, somewhere down the line distracted me. Here I am, lost. You don't have to be lost. Man. You have to stay focused. You know, why do we train for certain things? We train for those things because we want to get those things right. You, you have a test coming up, what do you do? You close the book? No, you open up the book. We're in training right now. The book needs to be open. We need to be examining what God wants us to do. And we need to do those things. He's our God. He's given us this word for a reason. Not, not just to be a good read. It's a bestseller. But he didn't give it to us just for a good read. He gave it to us in order that we may have what we need in order to have salvation. Man. Is that not what it says? For, for the grace of God has appeared bringing salvation for all people. It is by the grace of God that we have this book. Man. It's not, you know, once that person dies, may God have mercy on his soul. May he have mercy with us right now while we're living. Yeah, we deserve a whole lot, but God hasn't given it to us yet. He's given us things that we don't deserve, and, and we're appreciative of those things. Sometimes, we need to be appreciative of his word all the time. And we need to live the way we're supposed to live. And so we find here talking about convert. You know, what, what does it mean to convert? You, you're changing something. And if you change what's wrong into doing what's right, God is pleased with that. But if you're changing what's right to something wrong, God is displeased. Man. So men need to look at the word of God and they need to accept it as the great prophecy and the great revelation. There, there's no new revelations. God does not speak to men today as some would say that he speaks to them. He, he's talking to men. How is he talking to you? If it's not by you reading his word, you are hearing the wrong God. The God that we listen to is a living God. And we listen to him by reading his word and absorbing it and doing what is right and pleasing before him. Here we find in Acts chapter 17, let's look at verse 30, uh, 29. Being then God's offspring, we are not to think that the divine being is like gold or silver or, or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of man. The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. Amen. 
because he has fixed a day on which he would judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed and this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Yeah, we're, we're talking about prophecy, are we not? Amen. We're talking about what God has done and what God will do. He's not a liar. He's truthful. Now, we sometimes, we lie to ourselves mm. more than the next man lied to us. But God does not lie. Amen. So we need to hold fast to his word and understand that, yes, we need to change for the better and not the worse. Not worship him in ignorance, but worship him in spirit and truth. Look at the example that Jesus has left us because he is the one that God is going to judge us by. My son did right. Why, why are you not doing what's right? You remember Eli's sons? Eli's sons were, were priests. But they did not do what's right. But the young lad Samuel did. Did he not? Yes. He grew in, 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 in favor with God and with the people. Jesus it is the son of God. And, and God expects us to look at his son and do the things that are right. And we continue with 2 Peter 3, verse 8. But do not overlook this one fact. Beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Again, we, we, I have the word convert there. We, we're talking about repenting, though, a change in mind a change in direction Amen. because this is what God desires and are we not willing to give him what he desires because he's given us life Amen. we should be we, we should jump to the occasion to, to be one of his children to, to fulfill what he has said for us to fulfill in order for us to receive what he has in store for us he says in verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief and then the heavens will pass away with a roar and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved and the earth and the world when the works that are done on it will be exposed. That day's coming. It's not here yet. That day's coming. It's not past. It's coming. It's in the future. Amen. Well, where's the future? Well, as soon as I stopped talking, the future came and the future left. It happened again and again and again. When is God coming back? When is he sending his son? In the future. In the twinkling of an eye. You know, like a thief. You have a cookie on your plate. Well, no, we don't want to say cookie. We're going to go back to the old saying. Keep your eyes on your fries. <laughs> you turn your head and your fries, you know, they're gone. What is your life? It's not like fries. It's like a paper the Bible says. One moment you're here, the next moment you're gone. Man, man. That's how it, that's how it's gonna be. When when Jesus comes back, he's not coming with a warning. He's coming. Yeah, all of these things you're reading, talking about you're going to hear, that's not a warning. Those things are happening. Man. The warnings are, are before those things. When you hear that, that, that cry, when you hear that shout, when you hear that trumpet, that's not a warning. It's too late to change. Change now. Change now. Man. Before it is too late. In Man. 1 John 3, in 1 John 3, verse 1, 2, and 3. Purify and sanctify. Now we have to love God. 
for what he has done. No, no man can do these things, but God can. Mm -hmm. We can't do it by ourselves. We need him to, to help us. In 1 John 3, 1 John 3, verse 1, it says, See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Amen. Why do you act the way you act? Because I'm not of you. <laughs> I'm not with you. I'm one of God's children. Well, I still don't know why you act the way you act because you don't know the word. <laughs> Beloved, we, we, are the children, we are God's children now and we will be and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. Amen. And everyone thus hopes in him, purifies himself as he is pure. Who he? God is pure. Jesus is pure. Amen. The spirit is pure. So how should we be? If, we're, if you are part of a family, you act like the family acts, right? You should, mm -hmm. especially when they're doing what's right. You know, people say, well, you know, you, you're not part of this family anymore because you don't, you don't behave the way we behave. You don't dress the way we dress. You part of the family of God, you, you put on holiness. You need to keep holding this on. Keep doing what you're supposed to do. Be, be sanctified. Set apart to do what is right. Because you want to get into that, that great kingdom that, that has been prepared. He's not forsaken in his angels. Hell is that place. A lot of people are going. Don't think they are, but a lot of people are going. Amen. Because they're not doing what God wants them to do. Motivate to serve and to evangelize. Well, we need this, don't we? Amen. Brother Tanopoulos did a great job, you know, trying to mo motivate people to come to, to the, the Wednesday night training class, the Bible Amen. study for the ladies and, and, the, and the training class and for the men. Great job doing that. You know, going back to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24, you know, when we gather together, provoke one another through love and good works. Amen. Is that not, you know, do, do, do we not show love when we come together? You know, doing the things that are right and pleasing before God? Well, we need that provoking to do so. And again, appreciate Brother Tanakhus for doing that. Amen. We find here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52 and 58. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. Oh, wait, is that a warning? No, it's not a warning. He's just telling you what's going to happen. Too late when that happens. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised in perishable, and we shall be changed. Shall be changed. It's a great change, isn't it? Amen. A lot of times we get dirty, and we go and we change our clothes. <laughs> Your, your body may not look the way you expect it to look. You may not have on the best of clothes, but, you know, to be changed in, in, in what we're talking about right here, it, it is giving up this flesh and blood. If you're living, it's, it's to give up all the things that you desire and, and you're going to be able to enter into the kingdom. How so? Because you were steadfast. You were steadfast. Look at verse 58. I think I was messing with Brother Brian this morning when he was quoting the scripture. I said, what does 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 15 verse 59 say? And he didn't say a word. He said John. Well, same difference. It's still not a verse there. I did say John 6, didn't I? But anyway, he says here, therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast. Immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Amen. 
1 Corinthians 15, 58. Now, we need to understand that. We need to work. But again, understand that all the work that you're putting in, let it be for something worth something. Let it be in the Lord. You can stack up millions in your bank account, and, and once you get those millions, make sure that you share with me. Uh, okay. <laughs> but those millions are not going to do you any good if you're not in the Lord. Amen. No good whatsoever. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one of us, so each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or whether bad. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade others. But what we are is, but what we are is known to God and I hope it is known also to your conscience. Mm. Oh boy, I tell you. If, if, you know, a lot of people say, let your conscience be your guide. As long as it's guiding you in the right direction, let it be. <laughs> as soon as you find out that you're going in the wrong direction, let your conscience persuade you to come back and do the things that are right. Mm. You know, Paul, the things that he did, he said, I, I've done all with a, with, a, with a pure conscience. Although he was wrong, he did not realize he was wrong. But when he found out he was wrong, he changed and did the things that was right. He put Christ on through the watery grave of baptism, lived a life that God was pleased with. He said, there's a crown laid up for me, and not for me only, but all those that love his appearing. Yeah. You know, when Mama came down the road with the switch, and you knew that you wasn't the one that was doing something wrong. You were glad. But you were glad for the wrong reason because she whipped everybody. <laughs> Those that love the appearing of the Lord are the ones that are doing what's right. Amen. He's not going to take revenge on you. He's not, he, not going to you know, bring flame and fire down on you because you've done what's right. But the one that has not done what's right, he will get his reward. Bible says in verse 14, for the love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. We not serve a loving God. Amen. All these things that, that we have read about today, the, the things that, that, that have been prophesied about, the things that had come to pass, the things that we're still waiting on. We should love God and understand that He has given us direction, given us instruction on how we should live. So I want to ask this morning, how many of you are outside of Christ? And you have read that those that do not love his appearing, or you know this, will not inherit a home in eternity, in heaven with him. Again, we, we've never seen him, but we will. Amen. You're going to see him outside the kingdom if, if you have not done what's right and not be able to get in. And if you have done what's right, you're going to see him at that throne, and then you're going to be able to enter in to be with him throughout all eternity. See, no one want to be with someone that doesn't love them. God loves us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He's going to judge us according to what we have done, not the next man. So let's live and do what's right and please him before him. Amen. If you're here and you're not a child of God and you want to become one, quit putting off and start putting on. Come and to make that confession that you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, be immersed in the watery very baptism. Why did he come? He came to save his people from their sins. Why did he come? He came to give us life and to give it to us more abundantly. So let's accept him and do what is right. Accept his word. If you're here and you're not a child of God, 
That opportunity is yours. If you're here and you are a child of God and you're straight away, we'll encourage you to come back to the fold before it is too late. If you're here in your subject, we ask you to please come as we stand and sing the invitation hymn. Number 550. Fear not, little yes. the Savior divine. The Father has willed that the kingdom be thine. O soul, not your garments with sin here below. My sheep and my lamb must be whiter than snow. Never forsake you, a brother and 